Baseball Savant and StatCast have recently unveiled six new bat tracking metrics that are now live for you to look at. So for all of you analytics and stat nerds or couch GMs out there that are interested in the small details on why certain players are performing better than others or why they should be performing than what their top line stats are showing, these new metrics are going to be key to look at. These six new metrics are bat speed, fast swing rate, squared up rate, blasts, swing length, and then swords. MLB recently released an article, which I will link in the description of this video, explaining what each of these new metrics are, and that's what we're gonna to cover today, all of the small details. The article starts off by stating that dating back to the start of the game, players on both sides of the, ball, of the ball have been looking to gain an advantage. Pitchers are looking to gain velocity and to gain movement on their pitches. And in the same light, hitters are looking to hit the ball harder and farther. And so one of the ways that the batter can control how far or how hard they hit the ball is via the bat speed. You look back to this offseason specifically, Ty France was at driveline baseball, and it was noted that he gained about three to three and a half miles per hour of bat speed throughout the offseason. A couple other big names that have openly talked about trying to increase their bat speed are Mookie Betts and Lars Newtbar, but pretty much every big leaguer is at a driveline baseball or a tread athletics trying to in increase those small metrics that make a big difference down the stretch. This article states that in the prior years, there's been a lot of testing done on these metrics. Every year, including the postseason, there's about 350,000 total swings. The baseball savant metrics for bat tracking will date back to April 3rd of 2024. All of the data prior to that is treated as testing only. And first off, how are they tracking what the bat is doing in games? In each of the 30 major league parks, there are five high frame rate Hawkeye cameras which help them track not only the speed of the bat, but also the path it takes and its location and physical space, as well as in relation to the ball coming toward it. The speed of the swing is measured at the sweet spot of the barrel, approximately six inches from the head of the bat. And this is an important distinction because the different parts of the bat move at different speeds. The handle is gonna move different than at the very tip of the bat. The sweet spot is where they're measuring. And this is where the batter is generally trying to hit the ball anyway, right in that sweet spot. So for example, when John Carlos Stanton hit a home run at 119.1 miles per hour the other week, it was with a swing of 83.7 miles per hour, one of his 20 hardest swings of the season, and well above the major league average of 72 miles an hour. It had a swing length of 8.6 feet, also above the average of 7.3 feet, and it was 100 percent squared up. Now that's a lot of words. Here's a visual to go along with that. This is that home run that John Carlos Stanton hit that we just described. This is really cool that with the Hawkeye cameras in stadium, they're able to track the entire bat path. As you can see here, they see exactly where that sweet spot is in the most white part of that swing. And then of course, there's the trajectory of the ball, the ball speed. And then as we get more into it, all of those numbers will make more sense as we talk through these six new stat cast metrics. So first off, starting off with bat speed. So how is bat speed captured? Bat speed is measured at the sweet spot of the bat. A batter's seasonal bat speed is the average of the top 90% of his swings. The MLB average bat speed is 72 miles an hour. It states that bat speed is obviously the baseline for a hitter like fastball velocity is for a pitcher. It's not everything, but it is important. As the science goes on balls hit in the air, every one mile per hour of bat speed earns you approximately six more feet of distance, which is enough to turn a warning track fly out into a home run, which is widely valuable. As I mentioned, Ty France gained about three miles per hour of bat speed this last offseason. If you take that three miles per hour, multiply it by the six more feet of distance, that's potentially another 18 feet of distance that Ty France could get on a fly ball compared to last year. That is a massive difference, especially considering that the warning track itself is probably about 10 feet. I stand corrected, the warning track is actually about 15 feet. So when you look at the distribution of all swings in 2024 so far, you get a visual that looks like this graph here, showing that the MLB average swing is 72 miles per hour and that two thirds of the total swings are between 68 miles an hour and 77 miles an hour. A player's seasonal average is taking the average of the top 90% of his swings because they're just not interested in what happens on check swings or bunts, which is why they're not accounting for the bottom 10% of swings. The average swing is 72 miles per hour and the spread here is approximately 20 miles per hour from the slowest in Luisa Rise at 62 miles per hour to the fastest in, of course, John Carlos Stanton with an 81 mile per hour 
average bat speed. So let's take a look at the top 10 swing leaders so far in 2024, and then the, the guys that have the slowest bat speed so far this year. As you can imagine, these are updated numbers as of May 21st. John Carlos Stanton is still in first place, and there's a decent margin between himself and O'Neill Cruz, who is second. John Carlos Stanton has an average bat speed of 80.5 miles per hour, and his fast swing rate, which we'll get into in a second, is 97.5%. Every time John Carlos Stanton swings the bat, he is swinging as hard as he can because his job in between the lines is to hit nukes. Deep to left field, there it goes! You'll also notice that John Carlos Stanton has the second largest swing length. With a longer swing and a faster swing, he's able to create more potential energy in his swing, which again, launches the ball. You'll notice that the guys with the highest average bat speed, go figure, are the biggest power guys in the game. John Carlos Stanton, O'Neill Cruz, Kyle Schwarber, other usual suspects like Aaron Judge, Juan Soto, Julio Rodriguez, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Jordan Alvarez, Gunnar Henderson, all these guys, they swing the bat very fast. You'll also notice that the guys that swing the bat the hardest... They also have quite a bit of swing and miss. They're okay with that swing and miss because when you are swinging the bat as hard as they are, when you make contact, it's going to go a long way. Now, the guys with the slowest bat speed, first off is Luis Arise. What you'll notice with him, he's the batting champion. He swings the bat on average the slowest, but these guys with the slower bat speed, they're able to have a bit more control on the bat. They're going to have a higher contact rate, and you might see some of these guys with a higher batting average than some of those bigger power guys. But as we'll get into, there is a balance between swinging it hard versus swinging it soft. The article states that, oh no, another reason that Satcast doesn't respect a rise, right? Well, not quite. Slower doesn't always mean worse. Sometimes it just means different. In the same way, a pitcher with a below average fastball might still find a way to succeed. For example, this year, Shota Imanaga has the most valuable pitch in all of baseball, but it's a four seam fastball that's at just 92 miles per hour versus Mason Miller, who's throwing it 103 with the fastball. A 92 mile an hour four seam, because it's different, can still be just as effective as 103. The article then states, so why does any of this matter? After all, it's not like very many people would prefer Stanton over Stephen Kwan in their lineup, right? It's sort of like fastball velocity, and overall, it is much better to have velocity, whether you're pitching or whether you're hitting. But throwing 98 miles per hour doesn't automatically make you more productive than someone who throws 92. It's a tool, not the answer. Still, the data makes it pretty clear if you're not an outlier unicorn in terms of back control like Stephen Kwan or Luis Arise, you'd probably like to swing hard if you could. On swings with an 80 plus mile per hour bat speed, they're averaging a 321 batting average, a 665 slug, a 419 weighted on base average, 52% hard hit rate, and a plus two run value per 100 swings. 70 to 79 miles per hour bat speed, you're looking at a 274 batting average of 477 slug, 46% hard hit rate, and then dropping bat speed down to between 0 and 69 miles per hour, you're looking at a 202 batting average, 254 slug, a negative 4 run value per 100. The faster you swing the bat, likely the harder the ball is going to be hit, and the higher overall batting average and potential damage that you can do will increase. The average home run bat speed, for what it's worth, is 75 miles per hour. And it notes that the two slowest home run swings so far this year came from Isak Paredes and Coors Field at 63 miles per hour. And then at Yankee Stadium, the short porch was off Jose Trevino, 63.1 mile per hour swing. So now talking about fast swing rate. A fast swing is considered any swing that is 75 miles per hour or above. Approximately one quarter of swings are fast swings. In a similar way that a hard hit ball is one that's hit with an exit velocity of 95 miles per hour or higher, a fast swing is one that comes in at 75 miles per hour or more. Approximately 23% of swings are considered fast swings, 75 miles per hour or faster. It also notes that a number of players, including Arise and Quan, don't have a single fast swing. And as we saw in that chart before, guess who swings fast the most often? That's right, John Carlos Stanton. 75 miles per hour was chosen because that's the line where on a per swing basis, a swing goes from a negative run value for a hitter to average on its way to being a positive run value. This is where it gets really interesting because John Carlos Stanton and O'Neill Cruz have the top two fastest swings in the game. But as you can see here, John Carlos Stanton's fast swing rate is like 97% is what we just looked at. O'Neill Cruz has a fast swing rate of 75% now. And when you compare their distribution of swings, this is where it gets really interesting. This is John Carlos Stanton's and O'Neill Cruz's bat distribution comparison. As you can see, John Carlos Stanton swings the bat 
very hard, very frequently. O'Neill Cruz still swings the bat very fast, but you can see that his distribution is a bit more spread out. What this means is that John Carlos Stanton, even when there's a slider three feet out of the zone, if he's swinging, he is swinging hard. O'Neill Cruz, for example, if you were to see a changeup breaking down and away from him, he will slow his bat speed, giving him a better chance of making solid contact with the baseball. This article states that Cruz slows down about one quarter of his swings beneath the fast swing line. Again, while it's not a one size fit all thing, overall, you'd like to swing fast. On 75 plus mile per hour bat speeds, you're looking at a batting average above 300. On swings below 75 miles per hour, you're looking at a 247 batting average overall, a 371 slug, and a minus three run value per 100. The next key metric is the squared up rate. So what is considered a squared up ball? Well, each swing has a max attainable exit velocity based on the speed of the swing and the pitch. If a swing attains at least 80% of that exit velocity, it counts as a squared up swing. A swing more than 80% squared up can only happen on the sweet spot of the bat. So as the article states, this one is for you contact hitters, specifically Luis Arise, Stephen Kwan. They have very low bat speeds, but they have a tendency to square up the ball. This metric tells you how effective a hitter is at actually obtaining a swing's maximum exit velocity based on what's possible considering the speed of the swing and the pitch. Similar to exit velocity, the batter is responsible for something like 80% of this metric. An example for this metric is that when Ellie De La Cruz hit a home run last month against Milwaukee, he swung the bat 77.3 miles per hour against a 93.6 mile per hour pitch. The maximum exit velocity he could have generated there was 114.8 miles per hour, and he actually hit the ball 112.3 miles per hour, so that's considered 98% squared up, which really only can happen on the sweet spot of the bat. As it mentions though, it doesn't have to be a fast swing or a hard hit ball, and that's why Luis Arias has seen so much success. When Arias hit a single off of Camilo Duvall in April, he put a 66.4 mile per hour swing on an 89.1 mile per hour pitch. So while his slow swing limited his maximum exit velocity to 100.1 miles per hour, the fact that he actually got 98 miles per hour out of it means that he too was 98% squared up. Any pitch that is at least 80% squared up is considered to be squared up. And as you'd expect, this is where Luis Arias shines, topping the leaderboards in all of baseball. And if we go back to the current day stats, again, Luis Arias is still leading all of baseball. He has a 43.1% squared up swing percentage. Now, what you notice is that when you line up the squared up swing percentage, you go over here to the average bat speed and start looking for that red. Those are typically the most dangerous hitters in the game. Juan Soto is the prime example here. He has the highest average combined bat speed along with squared up swing percentage. He has an average bat speed of 76.2 miles per hour and a squared up swing percentage of 35.8%. But for the most part, you'll notice that a lot of these guys that are squaring up the ball much more frequently have a lower average bat speed. And when you switch the filter to the opposite, the guys with the lowest squared up percentage, there's a lot more red on the average bat speed. As I mentioned earlier, the guys that swing the bat a lot harder are typically going to swing and miss quite a bit more. Some of the guys in the top 10 to 15 of average bat speed that also have a low squared up percentage percentage are guys like Joe Adele and Matt Chapman. You scroll down a bit and you have other guys in those top numbers like Kyle Schwarber, you got Christopher Morel, you got Julio Rodriguez. In general, guys with the higher bat speeds are going to have a lower squared up percentage. They're going to have a higher swing and miss, unless you're a guy like Juan Soto who's able to control the bat path while also swinging very hard. And this article actually goes on to state that if it looks like a list of soft swings and oh my gosh, Juan Soto, well, they would agree because he squares up the ball like Steven Kwan and swings with 96 percentile speed. Now looking at the top line results of squared up versus non-squared up balls, the average on squared up balls is a 372 batting average, a 659 slug, a 439 weighted on base average, and a plus 11 run value per 100. Not squaring up a ball, well, it's not going to do you any good. You have a 127 batting average, a 1% hard hit rate, a 144 slug, and a negative 6 run value per 100. The next bat tracking metric that has been added is something called blasts. So what is a blast? Well, a blast is the most valuable swing that there is. A blasted swing is one that is squared up and has a fast swing. A squared up swing doesn't have a bat speed minimum, but a blast does. Squaring up a ball is good, but squaring it up with a fast bat speed is even better. As we talked about prior, one thing that the squared up rate does not require is a fast swing, which is why a rise is so good at it. 
But what if a squared up ball also had a fast swing? Well, that's what a blast is. According to StatCast, only 7% of swings qualify as a blast. The outcomes on blasts versus non-blasts are pretty incredible. The top line results on blasts so far this year are a 546 batting average, a 1.116 slug, 99% hard hit rate, and a plus 32 run value per 100. On non-blasts, you're looking at a 178 batting average, a 224 slug, 175 weighted on base average, a 17% hard hit rate, and a negative 6 run value per 100. As the article states, going from a non-blast to a blast will increase your slug by about 900 points. So who are the 2024 blast rate leaders? Kind of speaking to that last metric that we looked at, the average bat speed compared to the squared up swing percentage, Juan Soto had the highest combined average bat speed along with squared up swing percentage. And this correlates to him having the highest percentage of swings that are blasts. Juan Soto has a blast on 22.8% of his swings. And myself personally, I would have a blast on 100% of my swings if I could swing the bat like Juan Soto. You'll notice that pretty much all of these guys have a high average bat speed, and a lot of these guys with the high blasts are the highest producers so far this year. Again, Juan Soto, William Contreras is having a big year. Of course, Shohei Otani is insane. John Carlos Stanton has a ton of blasts. Other guys like Yandy Diaz, Aaron Judge, Gunnar Henderson is leading baseball in home runs. So again, a swing is considered a blast when a batter squares up a ball and does so with a minimum amount of bat speed. And even more technically, it's when percent squared up times 100 plus bat speed is greater or equal to 164. But an easier shorthand way to consider it is that the average between squared up rate and bat speed has to be at least 82 in order for it to be a blast. As it mentions, the point is this is where the big boys live. The fifth metric that has been added to bat tracking is called swing length. So how long is a batter swing? A swing's length is captured from the start of a swing until the impact point. A swing can be as short as four feet or as long as nearly 10 feet. And this is definitely an eye test thing. You can see that Luis Arias has a very short swing, whereas like a John Carlos Stanton, as it shows here exactly, has a very long swing. So here's a comparison between John Carlos Stanton and Luis Arias again. John Carlos Stanton with a 9.7 foot swing length. Luis Arias with just a 4.4 foot swing length. This is a massive difference. This is a difference of nearly six feet, which is huge. The article states that looking at the top and the bottom of the leaderboard, this one is satisfying because it's exactly the names you want it to be. Of course, Javier Baez and John Carlos Stanton have long swings. Of course, Luis Arise and Steven Kwan and other contact first hitters are quick to the ball. The article goes on to state that unlike some of our other metrics, however, this one's not clear as good or bad. It's more about a difference in style and whether you're trying to get power or contact. As you can see, when you take their average of 7.3 feet and split it into longer and shorter from there, shorter than average swings have an average of a 258 batting average, a 359 slug, a 19% whiff rate, whereas a longer than average swing has a lower batting average but a higher slug, and the whiff rate increases to 30%. As expected, a shorter swing means that you're probably going to have a higher probability of making contact and have a higher batting average. A longer swing, you're going to miss more. You're going to have a longer swing, more power, but less batting average. It then goes on to compare Aaron Judge and Luis Arise. For example, Aaron Judge, he has different lengths of swings in different parts of the zone, which makes sense because he has to extend to a ball low and away versus when it's high and tight. He's got to shorten that swing path shorten that swing length so that he can make contact with the pitch up and in. And if we go to the current leaderboard for swing length, again, Javier Baez and John Carlos Stanton are at the top. Javier Baez is in first place with an average swing length of 8.6 feet, but he still can't hit that first pitch that 50 Cent threw out. It is comedy watching Javier Baez try to hit a ball. You then reverse it, and of course, Luis Rise has the shortest average swing length at 5.9 feet. You'll notice again that with the shorter average swing length, the guys will have an average bat speed that is lower. When you extend it up to a higher swing length, the average bat speed will increase, and the guys with the bigger swings are typically the ones with the more power. Now, the last bat tracking metric that has been added in Baseball Savant is called the sword. This has been popularized by the Pitching Ninja over the prior years, and essentially a sword is when a pitcher makes the batter look awful. These are going to be the most awkward swings that you'll see. And likely if a guy is breaking his ankles in the box and hitting the dirt, that's probably a sword. A swing is considered a sword when it meets these three criteria. One, it has to be a swinging strike. Two, it has to be where the swing is incomplete. And three, the bat speed has to be in the lowest 10th percentile. 
Here's the prime example of what a sword looks like. This is Jared Jones of the Pirates going against Milwaukee Brewers, Bryce Terang at the plate. It's a swinging strike. The swing was not completed and the bat speed was in the lowest 10th percentile. And he also hit the deck for good measure. Jared Jones should have been taking in for questioning on that one. So the sword is a bat tracking metric, but really it's more so for the pitcher. What pitchers are making hitters look the most awkward? So let's take a look. First off, the hitters with the most swords so far this year. One is Zach Nito with 15 swords. Then you have other guys that aren't necessarily contact hitters in Kyle Schwarber, Julio Rodriguez, CJ Abrams, Fernando Tatis Jr., and then Will Brennan all have 11 swords. But then if you come up here to pitching and you go to bat tracking, then you filter on the pitchers with swords and Patrick Sandoval and Corbin Burns are tied with the leads for swords this year both with 11. There's another six guys that are tied for second place in Logan Gilbert, Luis Heal, Luis Severino, Jared Jones, Aaron Nola, and Chris Sale. The guys with the most swords are typically the best pitchers in the league with the nastiest stuff. But as you can see with these pitchers, all of these bat speed metrics are also available for pitchers. So for example, on average, hitters are swinging the bat hardest against Jose Quintana. The highest percentage of fast swing rate, so swings that are 75 miles per hour or faster, is still Jose Quintana. The pitcher that is getting squared up the most is Dakota Hudson from the Rockies. The pitcher that is allowing the highest percentage of blast per swing is Alex Wood from the A's. The pitcher with the longest swing length against is Dylan Lee from the Braves. Again, Corbin Burns and Patrick Sandoval have the most swords. And then if we reverse the metrics, the pitcher with the lowest average bat speed is Luke Weaver. The pitcher with the lowest percentage of fast swing rate is Andrew Nardi. The pitcher allowing the lowest percentage of squared up balls is Garrett Reed from the Mets. The pitcher allowing the fewest blast per swing percentage is Ryan Stanek with the Mariners. And then the pitcher with the lowest average swing length is Will Vest with the Tigers. Overall, some very interesting metrics that have been added to Baseball Savant. Shout out to you guys at Baseball Savant. If you work for Savant or StatCast, please reach out to me. I would love to have you on the podcast and hear about your story and some behind the scenes of what you guys do there with the Saber Metrics. Or just let me know where to send my resume because I could be looking at this stuff all day. So again, to recap, the six metrics that were added were bat speed, fast swing rate, squared up rate, blast, swing length, and then swords. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on these new metrics or if you find some interesting players that stand out from the rest. And for more content like this, make sure to subscribe to The Couch GM on YouTube. Make sure to go find me across social media platforms for short form content. And let me know if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.